Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London, in England. I'm looking at a book which has come to us, which I found fascinating because we've just been debating in Parliament prior to the pierogi of Parliament, because I'm recording this during the general election campaign. We have looked very clearly at the issue of slavery uh, in this country and internationally. Uh, we celebrated not that long ago the um, emancipation of the slaves in this country um, in terms of an anniversary and what we're looking at uh, this afternoon is a book that's come to us from Europa Law Publishing uh, which is a, it's only a small book but it's a very important one on trafficking in human beings whatever you want to call it slavery trafficking in human beings whatever it is it's a repugnant disgusting activity and I'm very grateful that this study has been produced because it's the number one article that we really have under the human rights legislation. Whatever is going to happen to that in the future, I don't know, but certainly Article 1 uh, will remain. And of course, the UN Charter and all the other different um, bodies that have come together to uh, make it clear that this sort of activity is just not acceptable. The subtitle of the book is called A Comparative Study of the international legal documents. So this has come from, if you like, a very high plane, both academically and jurisprudentially. The two authors are extremely experienced uh, people. I'm going to pronounce their names as best I can. Anna Isabel Perez uh, Capida or Cepeda and Demelsa Benito Sanchez. And I apologize if I haven't pronounced those names correctly, but they've both done an extremely important piece of work here. Now, my wife and I talked about this uh, book because this is not the first time that we've actually looked at a book covering this particularly uh, difficult and emot emotive area and tried to put forward some of the uh, unified responses that the European Union and I hope other serious countries worldwide will have towards stopping this disgraceful practice because it's still going on and it's time it was outlawed. We have the power with the internet, the power with publicity to identify who's responsible and punish them and stop this sort of behaviour. Unfortunately, we haven't gone as far as we should do. Now, we've given the title uh, of our review for this work a short book of massive significance on the contemporary scourge of human trafficking. Let's have a look at the book first. It's a very small book. That's the cover there. It's a paperback. You can see it's, it's a comparative study, as I say, of the international legal documents from Europa. There's the spine and then there's the back. It talks about the book. Um, the authors, um, Anna Isabel Perez uh, Cepeda, or Capeda, is Professor of Criminal Law at the University of Salamanca. And again, I do apologise for my pronunciation and um, Demelsa Benito Sanchez is a lecturer in criminal law at the University of Tesuto uh, in Spain. Now uh, both in both uh, Spanish. Uh, I think it's a first class book. Let me just show the front of it. There's the front page there. So it's, it's a very light book in terms of weight or anything but it's the content that, that counts. And there we have the contents. You can see how it's structured there. Um, and then you go into the book itself and then you have the preface right at the beginning and it sets out exactly what the problems are and we run through the book itself there is quite there are as you can see there are no there's no paragraph numbering with the re report study whatever you want to call it but there is the detailed footnoting which I think again is very helpful to justify assertions being made at the back there is um, a useful series of references, the bibliography, if you like, which is where they've obtained quite a lot of the source material. You can see that uh, there. And then what you have got right at the back, again, is uh, a whole series of, in fact, you've got a series of, of blocked out, boxed, shaded sections dealing specifically with certain legislation, for instance, the Coroners and Justice Act 2009, um, gang masters licensing act and so forth there's a lot of information here um, concerning uh, looking very specifically at 
a number of countries. For instance, here on page 57, you've got the Greek penal code. Now, that's giving you a flavour of what's actually in the book. And there are, as I say, these shaded areas, which gives you, for instance, these are definitions of trafficking in human beings. And I think that anybody who's involved in this, and as there are a lot of books now available, I think this is one of the books that starts off with a, a very clear indication of we know what the message is, but we need the justification to try to see how we're going to sort out what is a very serious problem internationally. And it hasn't, it's been with us for centuries, but if human beings are going to move forward, this is one area where we've got to get tough with those people who are responsible. And it's not just gender based on men only. It does involve both men and women. And it's, as I say, a disgusting trade and something that must have serious action taken against the people responsible. Because if you pick up any newspaper on almost a daily basis, there will be something concerning this somewhere in it. This is what we say about the book. The time has definitely come for a book like this. That's right. New from Europa Law Publishing, this study calls for a fully international approach to what has become an appalling problem. To that end, it offers a full review of the major initiatives launched by several international organisations which have dedicated themselves to eradicating the odious practice of human trafficking. And I've said quite a lot so far about that. As the subtitle indicates, the resulting legal documentation is subjected to rigorous scrutiny and informed comment. And the book emanates from the Fiducier uh, Research Project, that's F-I-D-U-C-I-A, that's the New European Crimes and Trust-based policy, which was funded mainly by the European Commission through what is known as the Seventh Framework Programme for Research and Development. So it's very much an EU-inspired initiative, and I thank everybody concerned for that. The aim is to develop a trust-based policy model, referred to as public trust, to determine the ways and means by which trafficking in human beings may be curbed and eventually stopped. Those are the aims. Let's get on with it. The expert authors, and I thank them as well, have done, they've done a wonderful job, express the views that, unfortunately, trafficking in human beings is one of a number of new European criminal behaviours, one of the lamentably unintended consequences of a core EU ideal, which is the free movement of peoples across Europe. And we're seeing during this general election campaign in England and the United Kingdom, recording this at the end of April 2015, we have been seeing some of the views coming across about the impact of this free movement of people and what it is having uh, across uh, certainly the United Kingdom, but of course much wider than that, the European Union itself. And this grotesque abuse, which is what it is, of freedom, this freedom which is a basic cornerstone of, of the what is now called the EU, is a basic cornerstone of the original treaties, of course. The thing is that this abuse has resulted in effectively a new form of slavery, which is an enormous business, say the authors, was booming and at its peak, and it's time it was stopped. Now, this book, I think, goes some way towards helping. It should be compulsory reading for every candidate to start with, but it won't be, of course. Not, however, confined to the EU, the European Union, this particularly cruel form of human slavery has become a worldwide phenomenon which subjects its victims to manifold crimes against the person and gross violations of human rights, from kidnapping to mental and physical violence and so on. And the details make harrowing reading, even for people like myself as practising barristers who have to deal with particularly unpleasant cases from time to time. What I would say is, of course, that when I'm talking about the issue of human slavery, it's not just about the enslavement, it's about all the other things that link in with it and how human beings can be so horrible to other human beings. And that is really where, to a certain extent, the publicity about what happens and the statements that some of these activists are totally unacceptable and there is no justification for them, whatever justifications are being put up, that is the first step 
on the road to stopping it. But at least we've got some constructive movements uh, at the moment from the EU as to how we're going to go about doing this. Um, the book, of course, draws the reader's attention to all the relevant international instruments drawn up to combat this, what is actually an international menace. And they emanate mainly, of course, from Article 4 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948, the forerunner of what we've got in the EU, which is the um, convention, the EU Convention on Human Rights, and of course it's in, in the United Kingdom, it's, it's based in the Human Rights Act of 1998. And of course the UN Universal Direct, uh, uh, Declaration declares the following, quote, no one shall be held in slavery or servitude. Slavery and the slave trade shall be prohibited in all their forms. Well, that's where we start off. And then we see what's happening. And as I've indicated, it's time that we started identifying those responsible and bringing them to justice internationally. So this is really about international law, maybe about criminal law in individual countries, but it's also about international law too. Latterly, however, an instrument known as the UN Trafficking Protocol is, as um, the two authors point out, the first legally binding instrument with an agreed upon definition of trafficking in persons. Well, we've made some progress then, and I don't mean that in any form of irony sense. Apparently, though, the measures put forward by this protocol to protect victims are less comprehensive than the measures contained in the European legal instruments in this matter. And of course, if we're not careful, we're going to start getting running around in circles very, very quickly when in fact the real issue must be to stop it, outlaw it, and deal with the people who are uh, actually pursuing it. In addition to analysing the content and import of the relevant legal documentation, which is the basis of this study, the authors also focus on the definition of human trafficking itself, the criminalisation of it, the prevention of it, including education, which I think is a must, and of course the protection of victims. Much of the book consists of the annex, which I've shown you, which details the responses to trafficking in specific countries, Finland, Greece I mentioned, Spain and the UK. Let me conclude by saying researchers and journalists, as well as legal practitioners internationally and nationally, will we think find this book with its impressive research base an enlightening and certainly sobering examination of this contemporary scourge. Let me just show you the book again briefly. There's the front, the spine, and then the back. You can see there what it is. If I just show you the back again, that's the reference point at the back, the bibliography. And then what you do have is you have this, um, the, this amazing series of annexes. For instance, I showed you the Greek. That's the Spanish code, which is there. You can see there's a lot of detail. The, the typeface is a bit small, but it's not that difficult to read. Um, that's Greece is before Spain, and then the various other countries are covered. As I said, the uh, the interesting one from our point of view is the United Kingdom, um, and I'm just getting to that at the moment. If I can find it here, that starts on page 79. You get that uh, there. And then, of course, at the front, as I've said, you've got the main um, the front cover there, and then you've got the various contents running all the way through, preface all the way down. Do read the preface right at the beginning because that always gives you some idea of where the the basis of this study came from. I'm, I'm very impressed that at least we are moving ahead, not as rapidly as I and many others would like to see, but we are moving ahead and trying to stamp this appalling business out. Thank you for the contribution so far and I hope that this will educate people about how appalling this particular trade is. Uh, it's a sobering thought when I'm recording this in a free society, in a beautiful free country like the United Kingdom, to find what, what is going on in other parts of the world. It's something where we can take a lead within the European Union, but I, I maintain we could still do that very much by getting the United Nations to get its act together and sort itself out, because this is really one of the most basic of our requirements. I'm recording this with the 800th anniversary of the sealing of Magna Carta about to be upon us on the 15th of June. 
2015 and I find it interesting that we're still talking about this sort of thing because the whole point of Magna Carta was to stop a monarch like King John acting as a slave master apart from stealing everybody's possessions and doing unspeakable and appalling things. Anyway, I've said that this book is well worth reading and believe me it is. It will open your eyes up about what's going on. Thank you to the authors, thank you to Europa uh, and uh, do have a good read of it and have a look at our reviews which are in the journals and on the web. Bye bye.